Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, before we talk about today's episode, why are you wearing a pair of oven gloves? What, these you mean? Yes. <laughs> well, the, uh, there is only one explanation, uh, apart, apart from me being weird. Well. Uh, <laughs> there's only one other explanation. So, You've come in your TR7. No. No? Okay. It, no, it hasn't, it hasn't blown up. So, no, hi-fi related. So, we must be reviewing the... New Musical Fidelity A1. Of course, of yes, course, and, brilliant. And, let me and, and, this, and we do genuinely need these, don't we? Because we've just uh, we've just tried to pick it up uh, without without them. We've just tried to pick it up without them, and um, yeah. just had to do a little bit of first aid. Yes. So yeah. uh, just got back from uh, A and E, uh, John Radcliffe A and E, uh, and uh, yeah. So ow. <laughs> so, <laughs> Probably not a good so, idea to wear shorts. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There, there goes my my knee. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's um, God. These oven gloves are smelly, Mike. What were you cooking last uh, night? Cooking A ones, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So there we go. I'm going to actually make you uh, put the oven gloves on and uh, and do the socket bit. Thanks. But, yeah. Great. Although it has cooled down a lot. So we had it ten minutes ago. We had it on, and it was so we'd be, be been on for maybe half an hour, and it was so hot we couldn't. Even go anywhere near picking it no, up. No, so we, no. So the only way we moved it to our sofa was via these other gloves. <laughs> which is about <laughs> six feet away. So, yeah. So there we go. It, which, which means it's very faithful to the original. <sighs> yeah. Uh, well, actually, better than the original because the yeah. very first ones didn't have the uh, vents on the side, did they? If that's, you remember. That's right. And, uh, and in fact, that was one of the, the sort of the obvious mods on this Tim de Paramagini yeah. design, design, wasn't it? So. Yeah, so actually later on in the production of the original, which came out in 1985, they they, they did notice it was running a bit hot and they, they added vents, but actually the vents on the originals were less, uh, less uh, well, I don't know what the word is, they were less venti. Less venti. Yeah, um, and uh, smaller and... Uh, but these are, yeah, so basically the, the amp here is a lot bigger, <laughs> or quite a lot bigger than the original. Um, and if you watch our our uh, our, retro, our riff that we did on the original A1, which was well over a year ago now, wasn't yes, it? it was. Um, it was. So uh, you'll probably better compare the size of this relative to to me, um, and because um, I haven't changed in size since then, but the the amp has. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a lot bigger. It it's, is a lot bigger. I think it's four hundred and forty. Uh, millimeters by 68 by 285 something like that so it's a full length full width amp now and uh, uh and a, a mere uh i think it's 10 and a half kilograms so uh so i've got a yeah. question yes so why why have why has it been relaunched why have musical facility come out with a new <laughs> with a new a new 2023 musical fidelity a1 amplifier What's that's the reasoning a, that's behind it? a very it. good question. Um, so the reason is that um, Anthony Michelson, who was the original, obviously the, the founder of Music Fidelity, the, yes. who, who we all know uh, well, um, and I think it's fair to say he was a bit of a character. He was a bit of a character. Um, and, uh, you know, and I mean that in a good, uh, a good way. Um, you know, he was, um, uh, he decided, he, I think he'd had enough, he'd retired or whatever, and he wanted to uh, sell the brand, and he sold it to... Uh, Heinz Litenegger of Project. Yes. Um, and um, interestingly, Heinz is a bit of a character as well. Yes. Um, so Heinz, um, I'm, I've known him for about 25 years, and he he reminds me of Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> Heinz, so, I'm so sorry. So, he's, but, <laughs> but, he's sort of uh, hallucinating because of the heat. So it, in one, only one way, right? <laughs> yes. So he doesn't do that, and he doesn't... Um, you know, he's not kind of evil or anything like that. Um, the difference is, is that he that Heinz's plans always work out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so Heinz is always scheming and planning and thinking of the future. And he's come up with so many interesting things over the years, including obviously launching projects, yes. uh, which was in the early 90s, right at the time when what hi-fi were telling us all that vinyl was dead yes. you know so you've got to you've got to hand it to the guy um so heights bought musical fidelity and 
I spoke to him at Munich at this Munich show uh, this earlier this year, and he said with a kind of twinkle in his eye, he said, you know, I didn't just buy the current line of musical fatality no, products. Fantastic, I remember. Yeah, I bought yeah. the designs. <laughs> yes. And yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously I would imagine very soon after uh, he, he kind of uh, you know, took, took over the company, uh, he got uh, the, the team working on, uh, on this. It's funny, isn't it? Because uh, so it's, it's, it's now cooled down a bit now, Mike. So it's, you it's, can, it's a bit like going back yeah. in time because on, on a previous riff, we, we reviewed yeah. the, the. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah, it we, is. We reviewed the Name Nate 50. Yeah. And now we're reviewing a Musical Fidelity A1. It feels yes. like we're sort of back in the 80s. It does. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it's really heavy, actually. It is, yeah. I, yeah. I understand there are some, yeah. some basic differences between this and the original A1 to make it better. Yes, and look, dare I say, more reliable because obviously, yeah. if you do have a class A, which which is fairly small, you have to drive it fairly hard. Yeah, and by nature, it gets hot anyway. So the, yeah. that that combination of, of the both wasn't the greatest thing with the eighties amplifiers. No, they had a history of dying. Yeah, um, but this has got some, you know, some bigger transformer. Um, yeah, it's 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 basically got um, improved power supply, <coughs> substantially beefed up power supply it's got um, would you like to demonstrate your favorite bits yeah look at that there's like sockets <laughs> over so, lots of sockets yeah. on this one really including nice. including a moving magnet moving coal phone very good yeah um, which I'm sure the and, original uh, had as well uh, yes it did yeah. Yeah. yeah switchable and uh, beefier binding posts and uh, yes. lots of inputs and so on and a direct button on yeah. the front yeah. which is quite cool yeah. and um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a second sorry um, sorry um, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's basically the same basic design as the Tim De Paravicini original, uh, in a larger case uh, with um, high, higher quality components. Um, the originals had uh, cheap Taiwanese components, I think, um, which were you know just about good enough for for, for the application, but. Um, the, the kind of thing, those kind of things would be normally used in a class AB amp that didn't get very hot. Yes. Uh, and um, yes. You know, they weren't really specified for, for heat, for high temperatures. Um, obviously, these components are much better in this. And because the case is larger, you get more cooling. More heat sink capacity. Heat, absolutely. Yep. The case is yep. a heat sink. It's big, actually. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they say they've got better internal heat management, which I'm sure is, the, uh, is, is part of these, uh, um, uh, these holes on the side. Um, and um, just a, a whole general uh, souping up, I think, of the original souping design. Up, that's a good way of putting but, it. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's not like a different amp. No. So with the, with with the in the case of the Nate Fifty, it is basically a different amp with a kind of done in a you know done in a kind of homage in the style of mm -hmm. the original Nate, i.e., yes, yeah. very minimalist and so on. Um, yeah. But it's um, uh, with in this case, it's as far as I can tell. Uh, from from the people I've spoken to, it is basically fundamentally the same, but with sort of modern accoutrements. It's like sort of getting a, a Sierra Cosworth and sticking bigger brakes and wheels and stuff on it, and better radiator. And interesting kind of analogy, thing. yeah, very interesting analogy, yeah. especially the the uh, the sort of uh, the the era. Yes. Um, yes. So. I wasn't a massive fan of the original A1. And I think there's sort of multiple reasons for that. Yeah. Um, one, because I was a fan of the Nate, as you know. and that's uh, like, I didn't know it's that. Like, it's like chalk and cheese. Um, <laughs> so, also, um, so also, thousands of viewers take a ga collective gasp <laughs> as they hear that. Retailing these were a nightmare because yeah. they just all broke down. Yeah. So they all came back. So that was a bit yeah. of a bad taste as well yeah but sound sonically i found it was a bit sort of fuzzy and underpowered yeah um the original nate uh, original a bigger part original a1 yes um so and in fact the original nate was definitely underpowered I was, <laughs> <laughs> no freudian slip so, there so i was, I was just <laughs> that you just lined me you set me up for that mic and i really you, had you cruelly really had. Kind of snatched it away yeah, at the last time. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I've had too many Nate jokes at my expense. <laughs> so um, but now, now you're doing them. But uh, well, it's, it's become infectious. Yes. Clearly. Yeah. So, but I really like this. Mm. I think this is great, and we've had a good listen to it, and yep. and it's actually really, really impressive. Yeah. Um, and price wise, because I don't think yep. we've mentioned price wise, have we? How much is this? So one thousand five hundred pounds. Now I'm probably going to get slated in the comments here. 
I think that's a bargain. Yeah. I think that's an absolute veritable yeah. bargain. Yeah. And, you know, and it really does beg the question, well, you can't buy anything like this you know, at all, can no. you? But pretty much at any price. Um, but, but at 1,500 quid, this, this, is, this is right in the mix. Yes. All of those gorgeous integrators, which yeah. we've sort of talked about over yeah. the last 12 months or so. Yeah. But I think this is really quite special. Um, yeah. and, and you came up with the most, uh, I hate to tell you this because it's, you know, giving you huge praise you came up with a brilliant analogy keep, and, keep going and you said it's um it's a bit like so, so if you got how could it was the analogy again it was it was all right actually <laughs> um so if you so if you think about the nate 50 as being yeah. a lin ecos yeah and if you think about the musical fidelity a1 here as being a name arrow yes then that was a sort of difference yeah. and um on the arrow it was almost like sometimes it would almost feel like it's remixed your music yeah You'd, you'd, you'd have a song which you know really, really well. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the, the drums would be forward and the bass would be, you know, more and the, the vocals would be changed. And we yeah. just listened to, we just listened to Grace Jones yeah. with this. We listened to Private Life uh, by Grace Jones. She's a really nicely recorded song anyway. So written, sounds, by, um, written by. Written or by. Or produced by. Written by. Um, Chrissy Hind of the Pretenders. Oh, was it? Yeah. Why didn't I know that? I should know that. I should know that. My gosh. Okay. Should I wish you'd prime me with the questions you're going to ask before we record? <laughs> Sorry, so I, look, so I look, don't look so stupid. <laughs> um, you asked me about din leads last time, and you didn't even know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it's got. Yes, and so, about 500 people in the it comments, did, yeah, yes, uh, very kindly told us what they were. So, Grace Jones, Private Life, written by um, Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders, in case you didn't know. Yeah, um. Do you, uh, do you want to edit that? <laughs> yes, we'll edit that. We don't edit, but uh, we, we can do that we don't. Change. We don't edit because we don't know how. Yes. Because um, we're not technical enough. Because we're still stuck in the 80s listening to yeah. Class A amplifiers. Yes. Um, the, her vocal, Grace Jones's vocal, was, was like way back in the mix. Yep. And everything else was sort of in your face and sort of pounding at you. Yep. And I just thought it was amazing. Yeah. And, and I think the standout for, and dare I say for both of us, was the mid-range. Yeah. It's gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely yeah. gorgeous, stunningly good. Um, so I've been really impressed. With the old A1, all I wanted was more more of it, if that yeah. makes sense. It was yeah. just a bit lightweight. Yeah. This doesn't feel like that. No. It doesn't feel like that at all. Um, so whilst you're saying it's very similar to the original, I think this is actually a lot better. Yeah. I really do yeah. think it's an awful lot better. Yeah. Um, and, and I would definitely have this on my shopping list if I had yeah. 1,500 quid to spend on an integrated. Yeah. Especially with the gadget, especially with the switchable MMMC and yep. you know all of those lovely things. Yep. But and I th actually think it's become quite an iconic design now. Mm. Um, it really has, and you know um, we may make jokes about George Foreman grills and things like that, and yes. frying eggs on it. But yep. um, but I still think it just looks absolutely fantastic. I really do. Yeah. I think it's a great yeah. looking amplifier. Yep. So well, I think it's I think it's definitely better than the original, and I know because I compared the two last week. Um, at, at, at my house, um, so I, I've got a rebuilt original with better quality components yes, and so of on. Yes, yeah. um, And um, that still sounds lovely, but this moves the sound a bit closer to the Spender Class A's, which, uh, sorry, the um, uh, Sugden Class A's. I beg, beg your pardon. The Sugden Class A's are, have a very kind of bright. It's not quite bright, but very precise um, and well lit, highly illuminated very kind of clear sound. It's like a kind of white LED kind of sound. Um, whereas the, the original uh, Music of Delta A1 is more like a kind of orange LED. Yes, it's, yeah. it's kind of warm and kind of fireside-y and sepia tinted, you know. A bit fuzzy. Um, yes, uh, well, it's still, <clears throat> in some ways it's still quite clear, but it's just tonally very warm. Um, and um, this is, I think, less warm. It's more transparent. It's more kind of neutral, as it were. It's still not quite as sort of searingly um, sort of translucent as a, as a Sugden, I think, uh, like the A21A or SE or whatever it is at, uh, at the moment, because um, I've, I've reviewed most of the Sugdens over the years. Mm. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I think it's it's kind of moves it in a kind of Sugden direction slightly, but it still keeps that kind of euphonic, kind of beguiling, sort of natural... Uh, naturally musical kind of sound, yes, um, yeah, uh, which is which is really nice. It, you know, it, yeah. it's it's actually left me wanting more because yeah. I've I've really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and in fact, 
I can't help but think that Anthony Michelson had the same feeling with his original A1. Yes. And I'm wondering if our new new Musical Fidelity guys will also feel the same because yeah. if they have bought the design rights to some of the pre yeah you know, some yes. of the old stock old yeah. old designs, they've got a a heck of a potential back catalogue because yeah. they've got the A100 yep. uh, which is this on speed the A200 yep. which is this on even more speed yep. um, and then they've got the, the access to all of those amazing power amplifiers like the 270, 370, 470 which was you needed a lorry to get yeah. into your house yeah. uh, and, pallet yeah. and, and, and I dread to think what it would do to the main supply yeah. Yeah. Um, you know and probably in this day and age with the yeah. energy prices being what yeah. they are it would be totally prohibitive but you know it's a lovely thought that they've got access to all of these yeah, amazing yeah. designs yeah. and and could you Use them with uprated components, yep. and just like they've done with with this. Um, so that could be really exciting. So you know, I think I think yes. we'd, we'd urge them to do that. We'd yes, urge Heinz to do that. Do, they, so. uh, if they did, um, if they did, <laughs> if Heinz did a, an, an A100, even a, an A100, it's don't uh, buy a smart meter. Don't no, buy a smart no, meter. No, no, you just get depressed. You would. Go, you know, would. Like Absolutely. So uh, there'd probably be like an alert on your phone. They would. It would start bleeping when you switch it on. There would. Um, yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. The. I mean, I've had an A100 as well, and it's basically an. Uh, it's a twice the power of the the A1 with uh, two uh, Pabst fat cooling fans, which. Um, uh, after a while, tended to to die because they ironically got too hot. The cooling <laughs> fans got too hot. <laughs> yes, the, uh, uh, the basically the kind of lubrication inside the fan, you know, kind gave of up. Gave up. That's and so also, the, the, they had this great way of clogging clogging the amplifier up with dust because they kind of sucked in so much, all yeah, the dust from yeah, your house. I can imagine. So uh, yes. yes, maybe they, a bit of redesign if they is is needed with the A one hundred if they do. Sure. One. Sure. But yeah, it opens the possibility it of really doing does. all sorts of really interesting things. Um, really so I does. tried the this new A1 with, um, I was using Cambridge Aeromax 6 speakers. Which are great. Uh, which are brilliant. We've yeah. got to do a, review, yeah. a riff on those. Yeah. Must do a riff on so those. So they're, they're, no longer, they're no longer available, but... They're, they're they're really great speaker and they they just love low powered amps. They're really benign. Totally off the radar yeah. speaker as well. We oh, yeah. very hear yeah. them. Very yeah. seldom hear them yeah. spoken yeah. about. They're a best kept secret. They, kind I of honestly speaker. think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, well, hey Cambridge Audio, <laughs> why don't you yes. re- start them? With, you know, <laughs> everyone's everyone else is starting bringing yes. out their old products. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so I think it's a, a great amp. Um, Musical Fidelity, you've got a really strong uh, model range at the moment. So yeah. the M5 SI, I think, costs roughly the same. I can't remember the exact price, but it's like a conventional class AB, and it's much bigger than that. It weighs an absolute ton. It's about you know like ten over well over ten kilograms more. Uh, it's got two times uh, 150 watts RMS per channel into eight ohms, and that's just a bit more expensive, I think, than that. Right. Uh, and that's a brilliant amplifier. You know, they've got such good, uh, such good sort of mid-price integrateds at the moment. But I'd still go for the A1 over the M5 SI, sure. um, because it, its mid-range is lovely. Yes. Um, yeah. Stunning. Yeah, and it's it's got um, it does. I think the new the new A1 does bass in a kind of good way. But it, it doesn't love doing bass. It, no. It sort no, of no. dutifully serves up the bass. Um, uh, but the mid range is stellar. I it think really is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. They, they've totally nailed it. Yeah, totally and utterly. Great nailed depth it. perspective, very uh, rhythmic and very engaging. Yeah. The only criticism I'd make of this is dynamics. So it doesn't quite have the kind of <coughs> dynamic scale of, uh, let's say, the name Nate Fifty. Yes. Uh, that we did uh, the you know uh, last week. Um, so the name will really signpost when something is like on that Grace Jones uh, track, for example, you know, when a kind of snare is hit, you know, really hard, then you really know about it on the name. And you still know about it on this, but it's just not quite so kind of ex- uh, explicit, does it? No, I just think um, that's the nature of the Class A, isn't it, really? Uh, yeah. So, well, it's and certainly a fairly the, small Class A as well. At that, certainly so. the nature of the power supply and the uh, yes, you know, yeah. accompanying... Uh, yeah. Uh, circuitry. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. So it's it's the Nate Fifty is um, I would say less transparent, less neutral, um, but arguably more fun in a way. Yes. Yeah. 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 But but you puppy know puppy dog puppy dog fun in a kind of puppy dog enthusiasm fun. Yeah. Whereas this is kind of more is it's just as much fun maybe but more beguiling. 
Uh, but it doesn't quite as it's kind of fun in a different way, isn't it? Yes, so, and and I'm going to be yeah. honest. If if you had said to me which one would you rather have, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to make the decision. No, yeah, no. I really wouldn't. I'd, no. Despite them being very different, yeah. I really like them both. Yes, um, yeah. and and this this is a this is a winner for me. I love yeah. this. So yeah. so let's do a riffometer on yeah. this. So what would you give this out of ten? Yeah, um, as a new product. So it's. I don't do this very often. I'll give it ten. No way. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the first time ever. I think. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's, it's for the it, for the value for money. I'm yeah. sure I've, I've probably done a couple of tens, but for the value, for, I just don't know how you could, you know, what more you could ask for 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 that price. You wow. Know? Okay. If it was if it was let's say if it was two thousand eight hundred quid, the sort of Nate fifty price. It might be down to nine and a half. Yes, but yeah. At, 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 at that money, it's incredible. Well, look, I'll tell yeah. you what then. We, we'll, we'll make this a very special riff. We'll yeah. do something we've never done before for a new product. We'll both give it a 10. Wow. How's that? And I think that's a first, isn't it, on riff? Wow. Um, and I'll, I'll agree with you completely because you, I don't think you can get something much better than this for, for, for 1,500 quid. Yeah. I think that is just, a, as I say, dare I say, a veritable yeah. bargain. So yes, fantastic. and it's it's got real charm as well. It it's, has. It's not, it's it not has. like it's a sort of hugely competent thing that you you can't argue with. It 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 has a, a, a kind of charm. It's like a kind of budget exotic amp. Isn't yes, it? it's got it's something special. Yeah, so, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's amazing. It's very unusual for me to give ten, but. To, for Mike to give 10 to anything that doesn't have name or exposure <laughs> written on it. And know. to musical fidelity. Yes. Gosh. And, yeah. and if, you know, and, and especially, you know, uh, having not been a fan, particularly big fan in the 80s. No. They, they've done a, a big U-turn here for me. Yeah. So fantastic. Yeah. And look, and on that note, <laughs> thank you very much. On that indeed. bombshell. On that bombshell, indeed, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it starts off with oven gloves. Um, it's yeah. finished on a bombshell. So thank you very much for watching this episode of... You, you can't take them home. <laughs> of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff and we'll very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>